So Pete, uh, how do you feel about that performance? Um, I, actually, what can I say about it? I, I haven't got to see the fight. I've seen the fight as a fighter perspective, right, in the ring with another guy. I didn't get to go back and see what it looked like, you know, from, from a fan standpoint. So, um, all around, I think it's probably a good fight, you know. We're getting a lot of feedback and a positive feedback, regardless of what it is. You know, even with the draw, I'm not going to be the type of fighter to come up here and tell y'all why I won, and that's not what kind of person I am. Are you satisfied that it's a draw? Man, this is this is this is how the story is written. You know, I don't have no no too much say into that. You know what I'm saying? I, I did what I had to do coming in here, you know what I mean? I trained for this fight, I prepared like a champion and um, you know, unfortunately we gotta walk and um you know, walk off with the draw. Peter, did you think it was over in the first round when you had it down? Man, I think all around, when you fought a guy like Hassan Adam, and I thought that in that fight, I learned that it's not really like that. It's, you know, any these guys can get back off the canvas and fight even harder. So you got to give a guy that much respect that he's able to do that. You want another shot at him, right? Well, listen, like I said, man, this is what I do for my job. I train for anybody. I train in to fight anybody. You know what I mean? Like, do I want to fight a rematch? Yeah. Let me tell, tell me how much money is involved, and let's do it. Are you going to be 160 next time? I mean, who knows, man? Like I said, this this was a, a challenge towards my, my career. I never had nothing like this happen, and it's something I'm gonna have to learn to deal with. Do you think you had too much respect for uh, Andy Lee, and that maybe you went in there with some bad blood? Things would have ended up differently. I'm gonna ask you a question. Oh, How much yeah. respect can you have for somebody that's punching you hard and trying to take you out of their land? Like, if this is a line of respect you have to be a fighter, you gotta give a guy enough respect where you be able to shake hands with him before the fight, throw punches to knock him out, and then if you don't, touch gloves after. So, you know, that I don't know how to define respect when you're fighting. Peter, would you say this was your hardest test so far in the ring? Well, you know, I've been out for one year, so I could say, yeah, this is the first time I was, you know, fighting and became a father. I had a lot of, um, you know, trial and error happened to my family. My uncle passed away with cancer. It was the hardest thing I ever had to deal with in my life to see somebody fight for their life. And, you know, um, I sucked it up. You know, he died right when I was on my way to California. He passed away. You know, and it was three days before I left him. And he died three days after. And um, I couldn't go to his funeral. Peter, how you doing? Um, what happened to the jab? He didn't throw it enough during this fight. Do you, do you feel that you should have thrown it more and used it more in the arsenal? Can I tell you something? You can always throw more jabs, you can always throw more punches. When you fight in a softball, it's kind of like a chess match. You know, he had a longer reach than me, and it was something that you don't, you know, he caught me coming in, doing exactly that. So if I was like, kept doing that, and I got knock, knock, knocked out, and nobody would be like, yo, man, maybe you shouldn't have been throwing so many jabs, because he caught you. But, you know, like I said, the chemistry of the fight is how it panned out. You know, man, him had an opportunity to fight again, it might be different, because we know each other now, we got history. So, but, by all means, I give him enough respect. Would you fight him in Ireland? Um, we made a lot of money fighting in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new arena. He came here with the belt to fight me here. You know, no disrespect to Ireland. I mean, you know, I think this is where we're sat right now to come fight. You know, we was on, you know, we was on nationwide TV, bro, for free. We, we, I might have little kids saying that they watch my fight. And I had it already had a kid tell me, I inspired her. I said, what, to be the champion? He said, no, man, you inspired me to be a doctor. You know what I'm saying? So great things get to happen when you get to fight on free TV like that. Peter, when you say you were at 100% tonight? 100% tonight, um, I could say I definitely was. So I put the work in. You know, I was away from my family for more than 10 weeks. You know, I was training hard. I did, you know, three 12-round fight um, boxing um, small marches and one 13-round. Um, you know, like I said, you can always do more. This is something you gotta go back and watch the fight and see what more you can do. Kid Chocolate, you mentioned your last fight was a year ago in DC. Did you feel any ring rust or and how did it feel to be back in the ring? I felt more ring rust actually going into the gym and preparing for this fight because you know what I mean your mind is the only thing that tells you what you're not able to do. But you gotta, I, I try to back it up with facts and tell myself why myself is lying to me. And like I said, I was in there sparring with Hugo Centeno, Lennox Allen, um, you know, Craig McEwen came and gave me some work. We had some other sparring partners. I was sparring four different guys sometimes in the same day. You won the fight, bro. You won the fight. I Thank felt you. that you landed, I felt that you landed between the shots. I felt that you made the fight. I felt that Andy Lee fought to keep you off of him. 
At times he throw a little punches, but I felt that you pressed the fight. He fought to keep you off of it. You landed the cleanest shots, the more powerful shots. You showed in the beginning of the fight that you missed being the champion. Oh man, I want to thank you so much. Sure that you miss being the champion. Thank you, Eric. I want to thank you. You look very nice with that jacket. When the bar after you, you know what I do. You know what I do. I mean, you know what I do. Now, Pete, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, obviously when you were first coming up, you wanted this fight with Andy Lee. You called him out a lot of times. You felt you were better then. Now that you stepped into the ring, is there any difference, or do you feel that the performance that you had tonight has to do with the one-year layoff and the fact that you've been inactive? You want to know what I learned? I learned that I don't got to call people out. You know what I'm saying? You don't always get what you call out. The first time it didn't happen, and I just learned that we just got to be respectful and things that come the way it's supposed to. I took a year off, yes, and um, I still put up a good fight. You know, um, it was a draw, and that's something I'm going to have to live with. And I think all around, you know, um, this is going to teach me a lot of stuff about myself. And I think if you live your life like that, where well, you have to take everything that you do in life and learn from it. The only thing you can do is get better at life. Well, my question was more like, um, when you guys were both coming up, you got common opponents, and you felt that you did better versus those common opponents, so you felt that you would, you know. Stop, and, stop make fights. You know, you can prepare for one guy. I mean, we watching Mayweather fight Pacquiao, and we seen the three or four fights he had with Marquez, and you seen the one fight that Floyd had with Marquez, and it was like something you can't even measure, but this, the fight with Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather has still been built up because you know, stop make fights. So I think all around we can assume one thing, but we can get a different result. At the weigh-in, they said you had two hours to make the weight. What efforts did you take to try and kick, kick that pound off? Went to the gym. I tried to run it off. I tried to do whatever it takes. Put a sauna suit. I did whatever it takes to to show people that I was willing to try. You know what I'm saying? No that, accident or nothing like that. No, no. Accident. You know you can't. You know? Do you know? As a do you know that's illegal? Did not know that. All right, now you know now. <laughs> AP, <laughs> 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 uh, I want to congratulate you on the performance. I think it was a tough fight, even though you know I know this to try to make weight, you know, the day of the way. But do, do you feel like Andy was the hardest puncher you ever hit? I know it's the first time you've been dropped, but you've been in some tough fights. Is he is he the hardest puncher you ever faced? What can I say? All right, and when we fighting, you usually see me hit the guy with all the hard punches all the time. And then you see a guy hit me with like one, two punches. You know, this was right on time. You know what I'm saying? This is a time punch. He hit me at the right time. I went down, I got back up, and it was a fight. You know what I'm saying? All around. You know, like I said, you can't have the perfect story. I can write it out. If I told you I wanted to, I had the ability to write the perfect story, you know what I would have did? I would have, okay, I would have knocked him out soon as I put him down. I would have went right outside, got my check, and then went home and spent time with my family. But that's not the way it go. I'm trying to battle John Cena. Can somebody find John Cena's management? WWE, somebody find John Cena and let's make this happen. So let's be super honest here and I'm gonna be really frank and a little uncouth. I'm not gonna suck a dick unless I'm gonna do it great. I'm not gonna write a book unless I'm gonna do it great. I'm not gonna cook a meal unless I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna touch anything unless I plan on doing it better than anyone else you've ever met in your entire life.